Good everyone. My name is Graphics. Today we want to study an aspect of applied physics which is called mechanical engineering science. Also, we want to study what is called static, which is a branch of mechanics also. Now, also you can also call it an aspect of structural mechanics also. Now we we'll look at this system of force. Now we call this term of force a concurrent coplanar force. Why do we call it a concurrent coplanar force? When you say a force, a system of force is concurrent, it means that all the all the forces, the line of action of the force, are meeting at one point. Right? You say this point is called the point of concurrence. When you say coplanar, it means the forces are on the same plane. Now the question here says that. We should determine the resultant force for the following system of concurrent coplanar force and also you find its sense. Now first thing you need to know is that we are looking for what? The resultant force. Now I will just write it here. Calculating for resultant force. Recall we know that my resultant force R is equals to what? The square root of the summation of f of x all square plus the summation of f of y all square. Now, in some textbook, they will call it summation of h all square and summation of v all square. The h here means vertical component, the h here means horizontal component, and the v here means vertical component, since that's f of y. Now, if you look at this now, summation means we know we have more than one force. So, there are two ways you can go about this. Right? One of the ways is by resolving the forces in terms by using what is called a resolution of force. Now, if I want to resolve this force here in terms of 10 Newton, right? So, let's first of all move. We know that for summation, the first condition for equilibrium is the summation of what? F of X equals to what? Zero, right? So, our condition here means that we are going to consider, right? forward force to be what? Positive and uh, backward force to be what? Negative. Or we say for force acting towards the left or force acting towards the right. This is our condition. Now we'll start. If you look at this guy here, this 10 Newton, you discover that if I resolve it, I'm also going to have in vertical and horizontal component because it's inclined. What we are doing now, we will call it resolution of what? Of forces. So when you resolve of, resolution of forces, is resolving of, of inclined force into vertical and what? Horizontal components. This is the inclined force, we are resolving it into vertical and what? Horizontal component. Now because it's going out, that is why the forces here are going out. Right? So the horizontal will give me... 10 cos 45 and the vertical will be 10 sin 45 in terms of 10 now if I come here also it's going this direction so it's facing like this also you resolve it right now the horizontal this is 5 newton so horizontal will be 5 cos 30 and the vertical will be 5 sine 30 is that okay now we we'll come here also is down we'll do this way this this way also it's always parallel to the plane so here will give me um 15 cos 60 and here will be 15 sine 60. 
so this is horizontal and this is vertical so i say this is my fx this is my fy this is also fy F, and so on and so forth now let's start so for summation of f of x it means that we are going to deal with only the forces along x axis now let's start from the first quadrant this is the first quadrant here this is one force now what do you say the arrow is facing to the right and we say forces to the right is what is positive so we are going to be having 10 cos 45 so i'm going to put 10 cos 45 right now another horizontal force after this the next one is this is facing backward i will say the back forces to the left is negative so it will be minus 5 cos 30 so we have minus 5 cos 30 right now the next one is this facing here that will give me what this is going to the right is positive so plus 15 cos 60 so we have plus 15 cos 60 so these are my horizontal components so when you press your calculator here 10 cos 45 let's see 10 cos 45 will give us what 7.071 minus 5 cos 30 will be 4.330 plus 15 cos 30 will be 7.5 15 cos 60 will give us 7.5 alright so adding all of them all together we are going to be having we have 10.241 this is the forces along x axis Newton right so we'll do for y so similarly we'll do for y we'll say that for summation similarly similarly for summation this is the second condition for equilibrium for summation of ef of y summation of f of y equals to what zero now we want to consider we want to consider the forces acting upward to the what positive and the one acting downward will be what? Negative. Right? So if you come back here, you discover that this will have how many of them also? Three. This is acting upward. That is 10. And any force facing up is positive. So 10 sine 45 plus what? 5 sine 30. So we have um, 10 sine 45. Plus 5 sine 30. Then, if you look at this, this other force here is facing downward, so it's minus. Any force facing downward is minus, so we have minus 15 sine 60. So we have uh, minus 15 sine 60. So this will give us. 7.071 plus 5 sine 30 will be 5 sine 30 will be 2.5 minus 15 sine 60 will be 12.5 nine nine so you add everything together you'll be having minus three point four one nine this is what we're having so the forces newton so the forces along y axis is minus three point four one nine nine so what you simply do here now what you've got in here and here you put it into your formula so we are going to say that therefore we will say that therefore therefore the resultant force arrow will give me 
the square root of now what is my square root my f of x is what 10.241 so I'm going to put the 10.241 funny enough there's a square here plus summation of what f of y that is what minus 3.419 so in brackets minus 3.419 right or square so if you do your arithmetic here this will be the square root of let's see 10.241 square will be we have 104.88 plus 3.419 square so we have 11.69 so when you add both of them together you'll be having we have 116 116.57 so if you look for the square root if you look for the square root we have in 10.79 so we have in r here to be equal to what 10.79 Seven nine, approximately ten point eight, right? Newton. That is my resultant force. Now the next question here, it said we should look for what? The sense. The sense means the direction, right? So looking for the direction, we need to know that for our direction, my tan theta will give me summation of f of y over what summation of f of x so that will now give me we're calculating for the sense now f of y here that I calculated is um, minus 3.419 that is 3.419 all over f of x which is 10.241 10.241 and we have my tan theta here so when you divide this you'll be having 0.334 and this is tan theta here so when the tan is coming here my theta will now give me the actan or you say the tan inverse 0.334 so theta will now give me shift tan or the answer I'll give me 18.46 18.46 degree so that is the direction of the resultant force so there are more than more than one way you can attempt this question another way you can attempt this question is you can assume I'll just give you an illustration that the first one is 10 sine 45 the second one will be this is 0 degree right and this is 90 degree this is 180 degree and this one coming down here will be 270 degree and this side 360 degree right so if you look at this first now we know in between 90 and 180 is 90 so if you remove 30 from 190 the remaining angle here will be what will be 60 because if you add 60 plus 90 plus 30 you get 90 now what you do from 0 to this point is what 90 90 plus 60 is what 150 so you mean that this side will be the angle here will be along x axis so if you're writing 5 cos 30 you're going to write so instead of you writing minus 5 cos 30 you just simply put your plus 5 cos 150 so if you press it 5 cos 150 you also got you also get minus 4.30 now similarly if you come here in between here and here is 90 so if I subtract 60 from 90, I'm going to have what? 30. So if we start 0, 90, 180, 270. 270 plus 30 will give me what? 300. So instead of me writing 15 cos 60, I'm going to write 15 cos 300. Right? 
So this is what I will have. So when by that you press 15 cos 300, you'll be having 7.5. You press 5 cos 150, you'll be having minus 4.330. So the same thing, instead of writing 5 here also, so I'll be writing, um, see what I mean here now. 15 cos what? 15, uh, 5 cos 150, same thing as saying minus 5 cos 30. 15 cos 60, same thing as saying 15 cos 300, right? And also, you change the same thing here too at this point in terms of sine. Instead of writing sine 60, you write sine 300. So 15 sine 300, I write 5 cos 5 sine 150. So by the time you press 5 sine 150, what you have for 5 sine 30 will also be the same thing. So if you find this video helpful, that's another approach in calculating for that. So if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to click on the subscribe button.